Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here. God, you're so close. We just ask that, that, that you just have your way in this time together, God, and that you speak to each individual heart right into their situation, right into their being, right into who you created them to be, God. And I pray that, that we understand what it means to be a Christian, what it, we understand what it means to be a Christ follower. We understand how much we're loved. In Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So, uh, title title of my message tonight is Living Water. Um, so, I'm, I'm donating plasma. Does anyone else donate plasma? <laughs> so, I donate plasma two times a week. And um, in order to donate plasma, you have to drink a lot of water. So, I've literally felt like living water just like drinking it, and then I'll be in a meeting, and I'll be like, I gotta leave. I have to leave. And they're like, what's going on? No, never mind. I've felt this living water, but we're gonna read out of John chapter four, so if you have your Bibles, um, I just invite you to go there, because this is a, a very enriching passage out of John four. And what I, what I really believe is that this passage about the Samaritan woman and Jesus' interaction with her is, is a foundation, um, not just for small groups, but for our Christianity. So let's just get into it. We're going to start in verse 7. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself? As did also his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I want to stop there. We're going to move on in a minute. I want to stop there. So we see this, we see this story of this woman who, who meets Jesus at a well, and, and, and he asks her, can, I, give me, can you give me a drink of water? And, and, and Jesus, and she says, well, I'm a Samaritan woman. If you didn't know, Samaritans and Jews did not get along. It was, it was, a, it was a very uh, tension, or, or there was a lot of tension between these two social groups. And so he shouldn't even have been talking or, or, or conversing with this woman, but he does anyways. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So we see Jesus actually talking in a way that is very spiritual, that's very um, figurative. And this woman continues to respond in a very practical and a very logical way. So he says he'll give her living water, and she says, you have nothing to draw with. You don't have a bucket. You have no bucket. How can, how can you get any water? And then Jesus says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. I'm going to read one more verse. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. So once again, she responds in a very practical way. She's like, man, I, I, I'm never going to get thirsty. They live in the desert. So I'm never going to get thirsty again? Yeah, Jesus, give me some of this water, this, this holy water, this special water. 
Whatever kind of water it is you're talking about, I want some of it because it'd be really nice to not have to keep walking over to this well and, and pulling the water out and carrying it back to all the people. It'd be really nice if we just had this water that made us never thirsty again. She's really thinking tangible here. But Jesus is not talking about actual water. He's talking about this thing called living water. And I want to focus in on verse 14, if you can put that up. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. In the verse earlier, it says, if you knew the gift of God. You see, God is trying to give her something. But her inability to understand doesn't allow her to receive the gift that he's trying to give to her. Verse 13, or 14, sorry. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, does not want to give you things in order just for your benefit. The reason God gives us mercy, love, Holy Spirit, grace, truth, the reason why he gives us these things is so that we will become them. He doesn't give us mercy so we can take advantage of it. He gives us mercy so that we can become mercy. He doesn't give us Holy Spirit just because so, it's a nice prize. He gives us Holy Spirit so we can become one with Holy Spirit. And we're going to jump to, to John 6 because it kind of explains this a little bit. It's actually John 7, sorry. John 7, verse 30, 37 says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this, verse 39, he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So this river of living water that Jesus is offering this woman is Holy Spirit. It's eternal life. It's, it's oneness relationship with Jesus Christ. It's forgiveness of her past in relationship with him for eternity. That's what he's offering her in John chapter 4. But he doesn't just want to give her this, this, this well of living water. He doesn't want to give her the water. He doesn't, just doesn't want to give you Holy Spirit. He just doesn't want to give it to you. He wants, it to, he wants you to become. Because the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. But how come sometimes... How come sometimes we don't, how come sometimes we feel dry? How come sometimes we don't feel like we're filled? He says we'll never be thirsty. He says we'll never be hungry. But how come sometimes we feel empty inside and we don't feel full? Because this is what Jesus says. This is red letters. This is, this is God's word. It says, this Holy Spirit, this water that I give will become in them river of living water, a spring of water that's bubbling, that's bubbling, that's bubbling up, that we can't hold it back. And we, and we continue to read in John chapter 4. Jesus goes on to ask her about her husband. And then she says, I have five husbands and, and, the, and the man that I'm living with is not my husband. And she's just like, oh my gosh. And then she says, there's a Messiah that's coming or there's a Messiah that's coming. Then Jesus says, I am the Messiah. And this woman believes. She believes that Jesus is the Messiah and she believes. And, and the reality is that Jesus did not condemn her because of her sin. He accepted her even though she was divorced five times living with a man who was not her husband. And Jesus is painting a beautiful picture that says, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've been doing, no matter what you've done, life becomes new when I come into the picture. 
Life becomes new when Jesus comes in and gives you Holy Spirit, the living water, the spring. And we keep continue reading and, and the disciples show up and they don't dare ask Jesus anything because they, they've seen people who ask Jesus questions and he makes them look silly. So they're like, we're just not going to ask you anything. We're just going to let it go. So th- verse 31, verse 4. Or chapter 4, verse 31. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Verse 33. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for the harvest. So we have this, we have this picture, we have, this, we have these two elements in the John chapter 4 of Jesus satisfying our thirst And then Jesus saying, my food is to do the will of the Father. I'm going to go to John 6, verse 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the bread of life. Jesus later, on, later goes on to say, eat my, eat my flesh and drink my blood. That, that, that'll shake you up, wouldn't it? <laughs> he says that in, in, in John chapter 6. Very truly I tell you, unless you eat, my, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And right after that, all of his disciples leave besides the twelve. What if I came up here and said, eat my flesh and drink my blood? I'm sure he didn't say it like that. But I think he's saying something in verse 35. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I hear this term in in Christian circles a lot, and, and if you don't come to church all that often and you haven't heard it, don't worry about it. And I'm not condemning, I don't want to heap all this judgment on you, but I do want to question the heart behind it. I hear people come to church and they say, that's where I get fed. I go to church in order to be fed. Or I'm dry and I come to church in order to be filled. John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So why is it? Why is it that we can feel so empty sometimes? Why is it that we feel that that we're empty when we have the well, when we have the spring that's living inside of us? And, 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 and how can we shift that perspective to where we are actually being fed by Holy Spirit on a constant basis instead of fasting a whole week and coming for a, a feast at church? I think he, he's showing us something, and I want to I jump to Romans, Romans 8. <laughs> and I think this is where This is where the shift, this is where the the perspective changes for us. And this is where it's going to change for us tonight, that we're going to start shifting our perspective from one thing to another, and it's going to change the actual condition of our spirit to where we no longer feel empty, but we're going to feel full. We're going to feel full in the morning, full in the evening, full when we go to bed. And I'm not going to say there's, there might be times that you, that you have things going on. There might be times, but we have to know how to get filled. So Romans 8, verse 6, the mind... Governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can, uh, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, 
are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, if indeed the well, the spring of living water lives in you, if indeed it lives in you, And if anyone does not have the spirit, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. I'm going to jump to verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So this is what happens. The Spirit is a spring of living water. He is and he's come to make his home inside of you, but we have a choice. We have a choice to either live by the Spirit or to live by the flesh. We have a choice every morning to wake up and say, am I going to indulge myself in my desires, in me, in what I want, in what I feel, or am I going to submit myself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, follow in the Spirit, live by the Spirit, read the Word through the Spirit, and then live through life? Because if we live through the Spirit, it is life and peace. If we live through the well, the well will spring up in us and we will never be thirsty again. If we eat, he says, eat my flesh. He is the word made flesh. If we eat his flesh, if we read this and start conforming our minds to what his word says, it says we'll never be hungry again, but we have a choice. It says in Colossians, it says how we can either, we have to, We can take off our old man and we can put on our new man. Every day we have an opportunity, we have a privilege, we have a choice to either walk in what we used to live in, which is the flesh, which is our old man. We have a choice to live through him who is dead or we have a choice to live through our new man, the new creature, the one who Christ sees to put him on every morning. But in Colossians 1, it says, put him on. It's an action verb. You cannot accidentally put on your new man. And when we, once we start doing that, what we'll start to realize is that we are actually going to be start living in this place till we are, we are full We're not thirsty anymore. And we come to church and we have a bunch of people who are full and then we all just overflow. That's exciting to me to think, to know that people are coming who are full. Not that if if you don't feel full, I don't wanna condemn you. I don't wanna make you feel like you're a terrible person. I am encouraging you though to start living like it says in Romans 8, to put your mind on the spirit. What does that mean to put your mind on the Spirit? That's a question that I, that I just can't answer for you. But it's a question that we can all take, take to the Word of God. It's the question that we can take to God. Say, what does it look like for me to walk by the Spirit? Because once we do that, we'll realize that we're not doing things for God, but we're doing it from him. We're doing it from God. We're living from that place to where that living water. We're living from that place that's full of life. We're not pulling from a dry place. Holy Spirit wants to lead us in that. Here's here's how it relates to community. Here's how it relates to, to relationships. Here's how it relates to the foundations of the Christian walk. Is if you're not full, you'll always pull from other people's reservoirs to try to fill you up. If you're not full, you'll pull from other people in order to satisfy the need that you have. But Jesus is saying, I can satisfy you with I can satisfy you forever if you just let me. He says he wants to give it to you. 
not just to give it so that you can become it. You can become it. We can become it. It's an invitation. But in order to become it, we have to receive it. Will you bow your heads with me? I want to ask if anyone, if anyone's, if anyone is here who who would say, you know, I feel, I feel dry, I feel empty, I feel hungry, I feel thirsty, I feel dissatisfied, unsatisfied. I, I feel that that God is is far away, and I came here hoping that I would find something. Um, if that's you. I'm here to tell you that God desires to fill you up. Not just temporarily, but eternally. Holy Spirit, I ask that you comfort and teach and fill every person in this room to the brim, God. God, we recognize the living water that's inside of us and we receive it. God wants to give it to all of us, but you, but you individually have to receive it. So if you need to, if you need to, to say that, to think that, I, I want to in, invite you to do that, just to say, God, I receive, I receive it. I receive the living water, the Holy Spirit that, that satisfies me. Jesus, you're amazing. Jesus made it possible for us to have a relationship back with God. In order for this woman, in John chapter 4, in order for her to receive the spring, in order for her to receive this living water, she had had to receive Jesus. She had to believe in Jesus. She had to recognize the fact that (laughs) he was the Messiah. She had to recognize the fact that... (sighs) what she was doing when she was living in her old way, it was wrong, and that he had come and he was gonna say, save them. If, if you're here and, and you don't know God, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, we wanna invite you to do that tonight because the reality is, what has your life ever done for you? What has living your life to please yourself ever done for you? The reality is you were never created for yourself. In Genesis chapter one, God 
he, he says that man was made in the image of God. We were made in his image. We were made for him. We were made for God. We were never made for ourselves. When Adam sinned, we got disconnected from God and we got connected to ourselves where we had to do everything from ourselves and it's a hopeless place that's leading to death. And as long as we hold on to our lives, it doesn't allow Jesus to save us from our lives. Because in Romans it says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And in Matthew 10 it says, if you want to find your life, you must lose your life. If you're here and, you, and you've never surrendered, if you've never said, Jesus, I want to follow you, I want to, I want to I, God, you've never admitted, God, I've sinned and I want to follow you because Jesus, you've paid for my sins, you've, you've, you've made me the person that you've created me to be, not for myself, but for your purpose. If you've never done that, I want to invite you with everyone's uh, heads, bowed, eyes, heads bowed and eyes closed. On the count of three, if you just raise your hands, one, two, three. Awesome, I just want to pray to close then. Dear God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Holy Spirit, who is so amazing, who's so life-giving, who, who is communicating to us your nature and your love. And I pray for everyone here that we would realize and understand and know the fact that Holy Spirit goes with us, that Holy Spirit is life-giving and help us to live according to the Spirit, live with our minds set on the Spirit, not on the flesh. We just love you, God, and we pray for our week. We pray for our, for our year of 2017, that it would be the best year ever, that it would be the most life-giving year ever, that, that we would be focused on your kingdom and in your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this series. For more information, call 616-534-4923 or visit us at reslife.org.